There's a song that came out during my childhood called Life is a Highway. It was a great tune. Several artists have remade it since then, but I still remember that original version with a great drum beat, the harmonica, the electric guitar in the opening, and then the almost spoken first verse and the classic chorus, Life is a Highway. Perhaps you remember the song. While I don't necessarily ascribe to the entire worldview of the song, I do think there are some helpful insights to offer worship leaders as we look at life and worship leading as a highway. Let's talk about this concept a little more in today's Weekly Worship Thought. Let's be honest, life has a lot of distractions. Kind of like billboards and signs and other vehicles on the road, life has a lot going on. It can be hard to stay focused with so many distractions vying for our attention. As worshipers, we can certainly become distracted ourselves, but as worship leaders, we must recognize this constant pull that our people face and try to help them to stay focused in the midst of the distraction. Many times while traveling on a highway with my GPS or my global positioning system, I will hear it say something like, merge left in one mile, and I realize that I have totally forgotten what I was doing. I was just going through the motions. But that friendly little reminder from my GPS redirects my focus and helps me to engage again. As worship leaders, it can be helpful for us to look for ways to act as sort of a GPS, a God positioning system. We are not standing up in front just to perform or to simply lead songs. Life is a highway. People get distracted. It is a good idea to remind people of what we are doing, even while we're doing it, to help redirect their focus and to get them ready to engage again. Throughout the years, I have heard several different terms being used to label what we do on stage during our congregational worship services. Terms such as music director, song leader, worship leader, and even lead worshiper have been suggested, each with their own positive or negative connotation. But I would suggest that our role should be more of a worship pastor role. We are called to pastor people in worship. We are called to shepherd the congregation as we point them not to us, but to Jesus. Let's get super practical and talk about some direct applications that emerge from thinking of life as a highway and of our task of shepherding people safely down the road towards Jesus during a typical congregational worship service. Several key bits of insight immediately come to mind for me, and I wrote about them in the book, but I want to take a practical look at those key bits of insight here. The first correlation I talked about was what I called night driving. I can't really model this for you because by its very nature, this is the kind of worship that you do on your own when no one else is around. It is supremely important for us as worship leaders to do a fair amount of night driving. And by that I mean we need to spend a significant amount of time in our own prayer closet, being alone with the Father. Jesus, the ultimate worship leader, often withdrew to lonely places to pray. As I said in the book, we are doing a huge disservice to our people and to ourselves if our main prayer time is on stage in front of others. Life is a highway. Get out there and do some lonely night driving. The second correlation seems completely opposite of the first, but it is the fact that there are many other drivers on this highway. The highway is filled with other drivers. They have their own agenda, their own schedule, and their own thoughts of how the driving should be done. Now, we may all be moving smoothly towards our destination, or we may wind up in a bit of a traffic jam, or worse. There may even be tragic moments when two or more cars collide, creating minor or devastating damage. This should always be avoided as much as possible, but it is a part of life. Life is a highway. Always be mindful of those around you. As a worship leader, be aware that your actions can help move others smoothly towards their heavenly destination or have devastating consequences. So many of the highway travelers have entered at different points. Creating as many on-ramps as possible allows for as many travelers as possible. As worship leaders, we need to realize that some people are ready to enter and to worship Jesus as soon as they walk through the church doors. Others, maybe they're ready at the start of the first song, but still others may not be ready to enter into worship until much later in the set list, if at all. No worries. Just acknowledge this reality and offer as many on-ramps as possible. 
Now, personally, I like to offer some helpful suggestions along the way, something like, hey, if you feel up to it as an act of worship, let's lift our hands to the Lord during this song as we sing the chorus together. Sometimes I'll invite people to maybe even clap along. I'll say something like, all right, let's put our hands together as we celebrate and sing this next song. I'm just inviting people in, right? At the end of the song, sometimes I'll even invite people to sing through the last chorus together as It's just a simple prayer to the Lord reminding them that these songs we are singing are essentially just musical prayers. Another way that I like to do this is by saying a few words between each song to help people understand why we are singing the songs that we are singing. Sometimes I'll explain why I chose the song, how it fits biblically or thematically to the morning service, or what it means to me on a personal level. I think there are ways of doing this really well, and there are ways of doing this really poorly. Personally, I don't like the NASCAR approach very much. Some worship leaders do a lot of talking and and offer prayers at the beginning, and then it's just zoom, 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 around and around the track, song after song, with only momentary pit stops in between. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum is what I call the toll road approach. Some worship leaders will stop between every song, and you can't start driving again until you pay the toll. Ain't nobody got time for that. We don't need to stop between every single song. I like to think of leading worship more as taking a family vacation. Yes, we have a destination in mind, and yes, we want to cover as much ground as we can between stops, but sometimes it can be really beneficial and life-giving to stop, to linger, to talk about where we are at, what's going on, and to just enjoy the moment together. Now, one final way that I like to provide on-ramps during congregational worship is by speaking the words of the next line of the song prior to actually singing it. I know that typically the lyrics are displayed on the screen behind me, but this simple gesture helps to communicate that I want people to sing along and that they don't have to stare at the screen. They can just close their eyes and focus on God and and I will occasionally be feeding them the lyrics. Now on a practical side, this also helps the person who's running the overhead projection to know for sure where I'm going with the song clearing up any possible distractions. What was one interesting truth or idea that stood out to you today, and how do you plan to implement that truth or idea in the future? In what ways do you think it is helpful to approach leading worship with the highway correlations in mind? How would you define the differences between music director, song leader, worship leader, lead worshiper, and worship pastor? Which one do you think best describes what happens in your congregational worship context? Which one do you think would best serve your congregational setting, and why? Do you think you are personally putting in enough night driving? Why or why not? If yes, how do you think that has helped you more effectively lead worship? If no, in what ways do you think it has hindered your effectiveness in leading worship? When it comes to speaking as a worship leader, do you think your typical congregational worship service reflects more of the NASCAR, toll road, or family vacation approach? Which approach resonates more deeply with you personally and why?